Brandon and Alex, we are beginning our day two notes. Can you show them what they look like? Day two notes, Emily. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. And they're sitting here waiting for you in your absentee folder down at Miss Stone's. There you go. So, write down the three basic trig functions. These are the most often used, sine, cosine, and tangent. They always refer to a right triangle. If you have a triangle that is not a right triangle, you may not use sine, cosine, and tangent. That's the way it is. So, we have an angle, and we will identify three sides of it by these names. This is the hypotenuse. This is side opposite because it is opposite the angle, theta. And this is side adjacent because it is next to the angle. So from those, can you remind me, Zach, what is sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine? Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent? Yeah. Opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so make sure that's down on your notes as a way of reminder. You've had that in your math past. And it is just a ratio. You divide whatever the length of side opposite is by the length of side hypotenuse to get the sign and so forth. We're going to use that in this mod. And we're going to start by looking at um, a vector. And this vector is going to be situated in quadrant 2. So give yourself a vector in quadrant 2. Let's call that vector C. Vectors are usually named with capital letters. So I just picked C. And each vector has what's called an X and Y component. And you've, some of you have seen that in math classes and, uh, as well. To get the X component and the Y component, you start at the origin and you end at the head of the vector, but your path may only be horizontal or vertical. So to get from here to here, I go horizontally this way. So I'll just darken it in. There's my X value. It's called the X component. And then I go up from there to get the Y component. So you see that I made my track from the origin to the head of C. I went horizontally then vertically. Zach? So are we always going to go along the x-axis first? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. We're going to call this component, the x component, with this symbol C sub x. And we're going to call this the y component as C sub y. So put their names in. Let's say that we know the, the x component and the y component. Let's say that the y component is given to be negative 1.2 meters. And let's say the x component is known to be 3.4 meters. Would this, um, would this match the picture that I've drawn here? Does this have a negative y component and a positive x component? No. So let's switch those. So let's make it match the picture. So we'll say we have a positive y component and a negative x component. Because from the origin we went back. This is a negative and then we went up. That's a positive. So now it matches my picture. I, this is called, these are the components. Let's call components of vector, components of vector C, just to be clear for our notes the first time. Now, I often need to go from component information to magnitude and direction. So I want you to change, let's say, change from component form, and this is, we won't get through this today, so when the bell rings, we'll shut it down, we won't have an assignment, and we'll pull it all back up on money, Monday. Money. <laughs> change from component form. No, it's on my mind. Change from component form to magnitude and direction. There are lots of scenarios where we have to do this. So it's just training for those scenarios. You will meet them in real life problems. 
So let's look at what I'm talking about. I know what components are, that's the x and y, but what's magnitude and direction? Magnitude is the length of this vector, and the direction is going to be the angle. The angle I'm interested in is where my vector c is from the x-axis, the positive x-axis. So I'm going to count this as the angle. Erase that other angle. So at the end of my story, my happy ending will look like this. There'll be a number in this blank called magnitude, and there'll be an angle in this, this little angle box. So I want a number and an angle, then I'm done. All right, what blast from the math pass comes out to help us figure out the magnitude? I'll make it clear to you because we know the x component. So I'm going to put minus 3.4 right there because it's given. And I'm going to put the y component here. It's given 1.2. So now it's a right triangle. So what? Pythagorean theory. Yeah, Pythag. So Pythag it. I want you to Pythag it. That's what I'll just say. It's a verb, Pythag. So I want you to Pythag this and tell me what the length of our vector C is. You got it? All right, we need someone to verify that. So A squared plus B squared, where A and B are the legs, equals C squared, which C... Pardon? Has it been confirmed? Okay. Notice I put the negative in for 3.4 squared. You really can skip the negative because when you square any value, whether it's negative or positive, it is a positive number. So square 1.2, add it to the square of 3.4, and that will give me C squared. So Zach, what was your last step? When you uh, it's 13 you get when you add it and then you have to take the square root of C. Alright, so it was 13 something? It was 13. And really? The square root of 13. This, this was even 13? Yep, and cool. the square root of 13. Alright, so if you square 1.2 and you square 3.4 and add it together, you get 13. But I don't want C squared, I want C. So take the square root of both sides. And what was it again? Uh, 3.6. 3.6. Alright, two sig, sig figs. Since I started in meters, I will end in meters. Alright, that's probably the simpler of the two operations. We found the magnitude, so I can go over here in my, the end of my happy story, my happy ending, and put in 3.6 there. Oh, five minutes still. We might get through it. Alright, so now I have to find the angle. In order to do that, I'm going to use trig. So I'm not going to find this angle first. I'm going to find its close cousin, this angle, because I need to use the right triangle to find out that angle. And then I will, I will use that to find this. So step one, find that angle. Which of our trig functions will come to give us this angle? It's going, this one we know as well now, so we could use any trig function, but this one was calculated, so let's assume we all did it wrong. This one is exact, and this one is exact, it was given in the problem. So which trig function involves this, this, and this? Do you know, Brian? Brian, which trig function involves this, this, and that? What? Which trig function involves this, this, and this? Right, so we're going to pull out our tangent function to find the angle. It's been a while. When we're going from component form to magnitude and direction, it's always the tangent. You don't really have to reevaluate that any longer. So let's do that. The tangent of the angle. The tangent of this angle, the blue angle, is opposite, there, 1.2, divided by negative 3.4. You get negative. What? What? 
you get a negative? Don't you have to take the inverse? You're dividing it by negative. Don't you have to take the inverse tan? Alright, I thought you meant you already took the inverse tan. So, what is, Zach, what's 1.2 divided by negative 3.4? 0.3529, take off the negative. Point negative, negative 0.3. 0.3529. Alright, so now the calculator knows what angle has this as its tan, and that's the tan inverse button. So hit tan, it's the second function above the tangent button. It looks like this, tan to the negative one. It's red tan inverse. Tan inverse, negative 0.3529. You're gonna have to be in degrees. Most of you are in um, radians. So you're gonna have to why. switch, and that's gonna mess you up when you go to your next class. <laughs> Just a warning. All right, you're back in degrees because look, we're working. We want this okay. in degrees. I got it. So, are we taping? Mm -hmm. Oh, how long do you think it's been? About 19. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> probably like 10 minutes. Maybe. Yeah, why don't we shut down? Just, we only have a few minutes, but I can't upload. I'll, I'll lose anything over 15.